Today I'm going to show you a complete beginner's guide to Photoshop AI Generative Fill. I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips, tricks, and hidden features allowing you to leave this video as a Photoshop AI expert. Let's get started. With Generative Fill in Adobe Photoshop Beta, you're going to be able to select anything on the canvas, type in a prompt with the Generative Fill text box, and generate brand new layers using artificial intelligence. It's pretty incredible that you can throw almost anything at this and it will go out of its way to create new art and new images inside of Photoshop. In order to get access to this, you will need access to Adobe Creative Cloud. So you'll need a free trial or paid membership. And then you'll need to download the Creative Cloud app inside of the Adobe Cloud Suite here. Once you get this app downloaded, you'll be able to install the Photoshop beta. So I have the Creative Cloud app right here running on my system. And in the left sidebar here, you can go over and select beta apps. And inside of beta apps, once you select this, at the very top here, we've got desktop apps, Photoshop beta. You'll want to go ahead and click install on this and set up the Photoshop beta inside of the Adobe Creative Cloud app on your system. And once we get Adobe Photoshop installed, you can see it's starting the installation process right now. It's at 1%. Once it gets all the way to 100, you'll be able to fully set up Adobe Photoshop beta and access the generative fill feature inside of Photoshop, which uses, uses artificial intelligence to create create art for you. And it's really incredible. Be sure to check out appfind.ai for all the best AI tools. Use the link in the description below appfind.ai to check out all the best AI tools. Now we have Adobe Photoshop beta open on this computer. And here we've got a few images. And with the generative fill, we get this brand new box at the very bottom. We can select the lasso tool here and go ahead and draw where we want to create AI part images and then select generative fill. And then a little new prompt comes up. And for us to be able to use this technology, we'll need to agree that we are 18 years or older and accept the user guidelines. We'll click agree. And then it asks us, what would you like to generate? So we can just say clouds and then press the generate button. And here the AI begins to start thinking and we know this is a shot of you know some sunflowers in a field here and it created a heart of clouds in the top there. They've got different iterations here that we can check out the variation. We've got a cloud there that's not a heart and then we've got a heart cloud that's black. So this cloud on version number two here looks the best. Uh, we can give that a thumbs up and uh, we can come here, regenerate all of these responses if we want to see if we can get some better ideas and uh, we'll see what else the generative fill options provide us. So they come out with various different variations here. They've came out with three more for clouds. We can use the arrow here to select them and then move on to the best one. So we've got a total of three three options created on each version once we entered the um, the prompt here clouds. And I like this one, version five. You can see all the different variations right here on the right. You can select them manually and then uh, pick which one you like. You can see that it creates a generative layer in the bottom and we can turn this layer off and on. It doesn't actually alter the image itself. It just adds on top with the brand new layer. So you can see me turning that layer off and on. We can come over here and uh, we can draw something else again. We can type in a generative fill prompt like a plane and see what happens there and click generate. So we've got a cloud in this brand new prompt and then we can enter the prompt for this uh, lovely plane and see it generate a plane just like that in the sky using artificial intelligence. It created three variations here and you'll notice that the generative layer two is now added on. So it does not alter the original image. I can turn this layer off. I can turn it back on. I can swipe through all the different variations of planes and I can see they've got three different variations here. I like the third option. And we can come over here, regenerate some more options for the plane and see we'll have a total of six variations that we can choose from. And all you have to do is just click on the generative fill prompt and type in whatever you'd like. We can see some different iterations here of the plane just like this. And then whichever one we like the best we can keep. And it's really neat uh, that you can create, you know, artificial intelligent images right here using AI. 
All you have to do is just select. So you can also have AI detect what should be there by leaving the field blank here. So we're not gonna put anything in the field and it's just gonna use AI to determine what should fit there best. And we can come here and see what that looks like. So it uses the current generative fill prompts that we've provided and then also um, below and it's come out to figure out that nothing should be there that looks great with nothing it created us three three options of the the very same cloud that we got um, i wonder if we try that again down here maybe select a larger selection here i'm going to select this whole sunflower and see what it can do with that whole sunflower we're going to click generate fill and then it's going to ask us what would we like to generate and i'm going to press the generate button without typing in anything and i'm going to have it use ai to figure out what it should do with that sunflower if it should add another one or redesign it completely um, so it, it thinks it processes we saw in the first prompt where we did this so it modified it a little bit um, and made it a little taller, a little thinner, um, and cut off a lot of flower, uh, flower petals there. Today's sponsor is L Gear's three-in-one wireless charger that lets you charge your AirPods, your Apple Watch, and your iPhone all at once, just like that. It has a nice sleek design for your desk or your nightstand, and it charges all three of your devices, your AirPods, your Apple Watch, in your iPhone all at the same time. Click the link in the description to purchase your 3-in-1 Gear charger and you can get it set up charging your Apple Watch, your AirPods, and your iPhone all at the same time, just like that. And it sits really nicely on your desk or your nightstand. You can get it in a black version or white version. And it's really cool, you just slide on your Apple Watch just like that. You put your, your AirPods at the very bottom and your phone wirelessly attaches just like that using MagSafe technology and it looks super sleek and really nice on your nightstand. So check it out, use the link in the description to get your three-in-one wireless charger today from L Gear. So depending on what type of photo you get, sometimes you get really great results, sometimes you don't. We can check out the other variations here where it morphs the sunflower into something completely different. Um, so depending on what type of image you have, you can get very different results. We can take a look at another image here We've got an image of someone underwater here. Um, we can use the lasso tool to select uh, something underwater and then click generative fill and we can type in a shark. And that's probably a terrible idea. You don't want to be swimming next to a shark, but uh, we'll see what the uh, AI comes up with and we'll be able to create different iterations of this inside of this image. So there it goes, just like that. It puts a shark right next to the human, everyone's worst nightmare here. Um, and I can come with all the different variations here. And just like this, it used AI to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this layer off because we do not want a shark next to a human. Um, we can come over here and select something, maybe put a, uh, a fish. If we put generative fill and type in fish, that's more, more suitable, uh, more friendly <laughs> rather than having a shark. But using AI, we type in a, a prompt here using generative fill, it goes out, it thinks, it processes, and then just like this, it puts a fish right there. And that fish is, it has different variations. This one probably looks the best here. So I'm gonna leave it on the third iteration, but we can check out the different variations that it creates with fishes. And then uh, we've got a fish now inside of this image. We can come over here, we can't really see the sun. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the lasso tool and then draw uh, a circle and then type in a sun shining bright and then press enter and generate a prompt and see if we can add in the sun as we play around with Photoshop beta with generative fill. So it goes out, it thinks, it starts to process and you know, a few moments here we'll have our example of what a sun would look like in this shot and just like this, it gives us the first iteration upside down rock, but the second iteration it puts the sun in, and the third iteration another version of the sun. So we've got various different iterations. I don't like any of these, so I'm going to hit the refill button and see if it can create something better. Um, but on first impression, you can see all the different variations right here in the variations panel on the right, and you can see the prompt a sun shining bright. So it goes out to think as we regenerate this and it starts, a lot of this looks like clip art to me. So maybe this one looks the best on the third. Um, so we can leave this one right here. 
So that's a quick example there of the uh, prompt right here in Generative Fill with AI. Let's take a look at another image and see what we can use Generative Fill in order to make this image better. So we can take our tool here. I'm going to say we'll select something on the table. How about we use Generative Fill to add a plate of cookies and then hit Generate. And then it'll go out, it'll process. I wonder if I should have drawn this uh, this field a little bit bigger so it will have more space to add cookies. It'll probably be a really tiny plate of cookies. But we see right now we've got a dinner table, it's set, there's nothing on the dinner table. And here it just like that used artificial intelligence to add a plate of cookies and it looks incredible. We've got some cookies there. They've got different variations. Let's check out variation number two. Some, uh, I don't know if those are chocolate chip or raisin cookies, but they look good. And so they've got three different plates of cookies. And all we had to do was just type in the text box prompt, add a plate of cookies. We can go over and try this again and say, add a, we'll click gender fill and say, add a fruit basket. And then click generate. And here we're using artificial intelligence. It goes out, it thinks it processes what's on the table, and then thinks, how can it add a you know fruit basket or basket of fruit and then blend it in well with what's already on the table. So it created three variations for us. We can check them out. And just like that, we've got a fruit basket right here on the table with AI. I'm really curious if we select this lower portion down here at the bottom. If we go over here, I wanna select the whole, the, we can see there's kind of a tiny pinch at the bottom, but if we select this emptiness right here, I'm curious what it will do if we just say it fill in the blank. So we're not going to type anything in the prompt. We're just going to click generate and then it can, you know, generate and put whatever it thinks should go there. So it processes, it takes an account of, you know, what is on this image and what it thinks should go there. And then it starts to process some and then it created more landscaping for us. So um, we can see it changes up a little bit just like that. With Rakuten, you can get cash back at over 3,500 stores. Check it out. As you're browsing, you can shop at your favorite stores and install the Rakuten extension to get cash back when you make purchases. You can use the link in the description to get a $30 bonus today. And this helps out the AppFind channel. So check out Rakuten today, shop at your favorite store, and earn cash back instantly. I'm going to come over here and select this. I want to add a prompt to it and say, um, add a bench underneath the table and then click generate. And now it's going to go out and we can see there's partly a bench right there at the very bottom, but I wonder if we can extend that bench or make it larger or make it more visible in this area. So just like that, it adds a wooden plaque for a bench for people to sit down at the very bottom like that using artificial intelligence. And all we had to do was just type in a prompt and it started to do that. So we can see the different iterations, the different variations of that. And here we have a full on AI created image with some cookies on the dinner table, some fruit in a bench that we've added all using generative AI, clicking and adding a prompt after we select something here on the canvas. So this is a really neat way to use artificial intelligence in Adobe's Photoshop generative fill AI. We've got a street here. I'm curious what will happen if we select the street and then say, uh, generative fill and then type in add a car and then click generate and then it starts the process we can see that there are cars in the very big background of this image but in the foreground we don't really see any cars on the top of the hill and just like that it adds a fancy car to the front using artificial intelligence we can zoom into this and see how detailed that was and it even puts it in line on the right track it's so neat it's so smart we can go switch to option and variation number two here see what that looks like in variation number three but i think variation number one looks the best because it's coming upwards towards you you can see it and just like this we use generative fill inside of adobe photoshop beta with the prompt add a car and it's added something brand new to our image using artificial intelligence and once again it does not alter the image itself you can use the layers on the side we can take away the background and you can see it just you know kind of masks the, the background a little bit and added the car onto the generative layer. Or we can keep the background and remove what we added just like that. So you can always modify these layers based off how you like them. It doesn't ruin the image that you currently have. It just adds on top of it. We can take a look at another image here. 
we've got a person laying in the grass if we select over here in this grass area i wonder what it would look like if we say something we click generative fill and say add a picnic table with food and then click generate and you know there's plenty of grass over there we'll see what it can do with that prompt but you know you'd love to go out to the park or um, your, your your local neighborhood and have a picnic and here we have a person and uh, uh, laying in the grass and now using adobe photoshop beta and generative fill we've added a picnic table with food just like that. All we had to do was just type in the words and it did all the magic for us. So you can see it added a little table on the grass and then on top we've got some food. We can check out variation number two. This one lays all the food on the ground and it seamlessly blends this into the grass. It looks like it's setting on top of the grass. You can see the grass is kind of hovering a little bit over the the picnic blanket here and it's pretty incredible that it can do that if we take a look if we take away the background you can see that it completely redesigned the grass for us and made it blend in seamlessly with the shot because if we take away this picnic option here we see the grass is kind of sticking up and then we add it in and you can see that the layers has merged well so in the the blanket is laying on top of the grass and it looks like this shot was taken perfectly without ai so it blends in very well we can check out the third variation here just the picnic bench no food i think i like option number two the best so we'll stick with that so we'll take a look here at what we've created so far we started off with the first option over here, um, we did the sunflower and then we added the sun to the underwater scene along with the fish and a shark. And then we came over here and we have the cookies on the plate, the fruit and the bench. And then we came over here to the city scene, added a car. And then we came over here to the picnic scene and added the food and picnic blanket, all using generative AI and just typing in what you want after you make a selection and then hitting generate. You can get this version of Photoshop right now. It's the beta version inside of the Adobe Creative Cloud. All you have to do is just hit the download button on the Adobe Creative Cloud beta section, and you can start using generative fill and AI right now in your project. It's really neat. This has been a complete beginner's guide of Adobe Photoshop beta using generative fill AI, where we've shown you how to create images using AI, using prompts, selecting things on your canvas, using the tools, and then automatically adding and generating new content onto that image. And these AI shots look phenomenal, as if they were you know, created using your own camera without AI. So you can check out this technology now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let us know what your favorite feature is about this creative you know, cloud beta here with Photoshop and your ability to use generative fill and AI. Let us know what you like the most about it in the comment section below. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to figure out when we release our next video. We love creating AI content for you and we love creating technology videos for you. So thanks for watching today's video. This has been a complete beginner's guide on the Adobe Photoshop beta generative fill AI technology. Thanks for watching.